the secret power, Bushes, Clintons, and the hidden dynasties. Chapter 1. The Foundations of Power Quote, Power tends to corrupt, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Lord Acton In the opening chapter, we trace the early roots of both the Bush and Clinton dynasties. George H.W. Bush, with his connection to Yale's Skull and Bones Society, and Bill Clinton, mentored by figures like Carol Quigley and David Rockefeller, lay the foundations for political powerhouses that would dominate the late 20th and early 21st centuries. This chapter delves into their rise, with personal anecdotes and interviews shedding light on their early political maneuverings. Dialogue George H. W. Bush, speaking to his son George W. during his Yale years, Skull and Bones isn't just a fraternity, son. It's a gateway, a passage to power. You'll meet men here who'll shape the world. You mean businessmen, politicians? They'll be both and more. E. Our family is tied to this legacy, and you'll carry it forward. A Chapter 2. Skull and Bones. A Brotherhood of Elites. Quote, the society has many powerful men and many of its members serve in key positions in the government and corporate world. Here we explore the inner workings of the secretive skull and bones society at Yale University, the breeding ground for powerful American elites, including members of the Bush family. The chapter uncovers hidden rituals, the deep network of influence, and how this society has shaped American leadership for decades. Dialogue Skull and Bones Initiation Scene Fictionalized This oath binds you to a loyalty above all others. You serve not just yourself, but the brotherhood, the legacy. What happens here stays here, forever. I swear, George W. Bush replies, his voice steady despite the strange, shadowy surroundings. Iva Sa Chapter 3 The Clintons and the Road to Power Quote, the Clintons weren't just riding the wave of American politics. They were creating it. Bill Clinton's rise from a small-town Arkansas boy to one of the most influential politicians of the modern era is explored in depth. We look at the influences behind his success, including his time at Oxford, his Rhodes Scholarship, and his connections to the Trilateral Commission. Hillary Clinton's own network is also examined, showing how the two became a political power couple. Dialogue Bill Clinton, in a private conversation with a political advisor, The game isn't just about winning elections. It's about shaping policy, controlling narratives, and making sure those with real power know who to turn to when the chips are down. Chapter 4 Behind Closed Doors the Council on Foreign Relations and Trilateral Commission. Quote, The true rulers in Washington are invisible and exercise power from behind the scenes. Felix Frankfurter. Both the Bushes and Clintons were key members of influential groups, such as the Council on Foreign Relations, CFR, and the Trilateral Commission. This chapter explores how these organizations operate, using behind-the-scenes influence to steer national and international policy in their favor. Specific meetings are fictionalized, showing how decisions made in these rooms impacted the global stage. Dialogue. Fictionalized dialogue during a CFR meeting. We need to ensure the Middle East remains unstable, but controllable. The Clintons can push the policy agenda forward, while the Bushes manage the oil interests. Agreed. Keep the public distracted. Focus on the terror narrative. Chapter 5. Secret Societies, the Bilderberg Group. Quote, the Bilderberg Group brings together world leaders to discuss and plan global events, often behind the curtain of democracy. The exclusive Bilderberg Group, often accused of being a shadow government, counts both the Bushes and Clintons among its attendees. This chapter looks at the origins of the group, how it operates, and the policies that have emerged from its secretive gatherings.
Using both real and fictionalized accounts, we uncover the strategies discussed at these meetings, from global finance to the Iraq War. Dialogue Fictionalized scene at a Bilderberg meeting The war in Iraq must proceed. Energy interests are at stake. George W., you'll sell it as a fight for freedom and democracy. Consider it done, George W. replies, with a nod to his father sitting across the room. Chapter 6. Clinton Global Initiative, Benevolence or Power Play Quote, In politics, nothing happens by accident. If it happens, you can bet it was planned that way. Franklin D. Roosevelt The Clinton Global Initiative is often lauded as a humanitarian powerhouse, but behind the scenes, it's much more. This chapter exposes how the initiative became a vehicle for the Clintons to maintain influence, broker deals, and stay relevant long after leaving the White House. Ties to foreign governments, corporations, and even criminal elements are explored. Dialogue. Bill and Hillary Clinton discuss strategy. We'll make sure the foundation does good work, Bill, but it will also be our leverage. It'll open doors that no politician could dream of. Hillary responds with a grin. Chapter 7. The Bush-Cheney Nexus and 9-11. Quote, there's no question that the Bushes used 9-11 to consolidate power and pursue pre-existing agendas. We turn to one of the most consequential events in modern history, 9-11. This chapter delves into the close ties between the Bush family and corporate and military interests, exploring how the war on terror became a tool for the Bush-Cheney administration to further their agenda. The relationship between the Clintons and Bushes in this era is also examined, showing a bipartisan approach to power. Dialogue George W. Bush and Dick Cheney in the Oval Office after 9-11 This is our chance, Dick. We're going to reshape the Middle East, secure the oil, and no one will stand in our way. It's all lined up. The Patriot Act, the military, the public. They're all behind us. Cheney replies. These I, toward chapter 8, the Clinton legacy, deals with the devil. Quote, power tends to corrupt, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. As the Clintons re-enter public life, we explore how they use their influence in the post-presidency world. From Hillary Clinton's role as Secretary of State to her presidential run, we examine how the Clinton Foundation, Foreign donors and hidden deals shaped global events, including the Arab Spring and U.S.-Russian relations. Dialogue, Hillary to a close aide during her presidential campaign. This isn't just about winning the White House. This is about keeping the system intact, the same system we helped build. The Chapter 9, Bush Family Secrets, Ties to the Saudis and the Carlyle Group. Quote, Follow the money and you'll find the truth. We dig deeper into the Bush family's financial dealings, particularly their ties to the Saudis through the Carlyle Group. This chapter reveals how war, oil, and money interlink, tracing connections between the Bushes, the Saudi royal family, and global arms deals. Dialogue A private meeting between George H.W. Bush and Saudi officials the partnership we've built goes beyond oil. It's about maintaining balance in the region and in our portfolios, Bush says with a sly grin. The Chapter 10. The Rise of the Clinton Machine Quote, Clinton's political machine is like a well-oiled engine. It runs on power and money. This chapter examines the rise of the Clinton machine, from state-level politics in Arkansas to the global stage. It also explores the Clintons' relationship with Wall Street and how they have secured funding and influence through corporate backers, financial institutions, and powerful media connections. Dialogue Bill Clinton to a Wall Street Executive We can make sure the regulations work in your favor, but we'll need your continued support. You know how this game is played. Chapter 11. From Enemies to Allies, Bush-Clinton Partnership. Quote, Politics makes strange bedfellows. 
Despite their political differences, the Bushes and Clintons formed an unexpected alliance in the post-9-11 era. This chapter examines their joint initiatives, such as the Clinton-Bush-Haiti Fund and their collaborations on various global initiatives. Their combined power is shown to transcend party lines, with both families working together to maintain their influence. Dialogue. George W. Bush to Bill Clinton at a private event. We've had our battles, Bill, but when it comes to the bigger picture, we're on the same team. Power isn't red or blue. It's us versus them, Clinton agrees. Chapter 12. The Final Play, 2020 and Beyond. Quote, History is written by those who hold the power. We fast forward to the present day, analyzing how both families continue to wield influence. From Jeb Bush's failed presidential run to Hillary Clinton's defeat, we explore how the Bushes and Clintons have adapted to modern politics, the rise of populism, and the Trump era. Both dynasties now operate in the shadows, with their legacies intertwined with secret societies and global elites. Chapter 12. The Final Play, 2020 and Beyond, Continued. Quote, History is written by those who hold the power. As the Bushes and Clintons navigated the tumultuous landscape of 21st century American politics, both families adjusted their strategies. With the rise of populism, epitomized by Donald Trump, they faced the unprecedented challenge of maintaining influence in an era of deepening political division. While many assumed that the power of these two dynasties had waned, their influence quietly persisted, working behind the scenes, influencing policy, and shaping the future. Jeb Bush's failed 2016 presidential run and Hillary Clinton's defeat in the same election marked a significant turning point. Yet the Bushes and Clintons, ever adaptable, shifted their attention from direct political office to more discreet forms of power. Dialogue In a private conversation, Hillary Clinton speaks with Chelsea Clinton, preparing her for the next generation of leadership. It's not always about being in the spotlight, Chelsea. Power comes in many forms. We shape policy through foundations, media influence, and global initiatives. And one day, when the timing is right, you'll be the one they turn to. Do you think people will still trust us after everything? Chelsea asks, her eyes searching for reassurance. Trust? Hillary smiles. It's not about trust. It's about control. Meanwhile, George W. Bush advised his brother Jeb on the shifting political currents. George W., speaking at a family retreat. The landscape's different now, Jeb. People don't want polished politicians. They want someone who tells it like it is. But that doesn't mean we're out of the game. We still control the apparatus behind the scenes, the donors, the corporations, the think tanks. You just need to be patient. The Clintons and Bushes both understood that the levers of power weren't solely in the hands of those in office. The wealth, networks, and influence they had, accumulated over decades, would continue to play a critical role in American governance, regardless of election outcomes. Chapter 13. The New World, Globalists and the Future. Quote, the future belongs to those who prepare for it today. Malcolm X As the world entered the 2020s, new challenges emerged, including the COVID-19 pandemic, the rise of authoritarianism, and increasing tensions between the U.S., China, and Russia. Both dynasties saw these global crises as opportunities to further entrench their influence in the new world order. Bill and Hillary Clinton, through the Clinton Global Initiative, continued to exert pressure on international policy, aligning themselves with globalist goals. Their work in global health and economic development helped them maintain relationships with powerful international players, including foreign governments and multinational corporations. At the same time, the Bush family, through the Carlyle Group and its financial empire, expanded its influence in the defense and energy sectors, 
By forging alliances with global energy corporations and maintaining close ties with military contractors, the Bushes quietly positioned themselves as central figures in the geopolitical landscape. Dialogue Bill Clinton meets with a group of international leaders at a World Economic Forum event in Davos. The world is changing fast. The pandemic was just the beginning. What we need now is a unified response, a global governance that can handle these challenges effectively. And who do you propose should lead that effort? asks a European diplomat. We do, Bill responds confidently. Those who understand the system, those who built it, are best equipped to steer it through the storm. Meanwhile, George W. Bush and his son, George P. Bush, discuss their role in the shifting global power structure. George W. advising his son. The key to staying ahead is knowing when to let the public fight their battles while you pull the strings. Watch where the money goes. Who makes the decisions behind closed doors? That's where the real power is. As the world faced economic instability, social unrest, and shifting global alliances, the Bush and Clinton dynasties remained pivotal players. Their ability to navigate the hidden corridors of power, use their connections in secret societies, and maintain influence through global initiatives ensured that they would continue to shape the future. Epilogue, the Legacy of Dynasties In the decades to come, the legacies of the Bushes and Clintons would be remembered not just for their time in office, but for the systems of power they built and maintained. Their deep ties to secret societies, global organizations, and the financial elite allowed them to stay relevant, even as the world changed around them. For all the public saw, the political careers of the Bushes and Clintons may have seemed to fade, but in reality, their influence had never been stronger. Quote, The most successful tyranny is not the one that uses force to assure uniformity, but the one that removes the awareness of other possibilities. As the next generation of leaders emerged, both families prepared to pass the torch. Chelsea Clinton and George P. Bush stood ready to continue the dynasty's work ensuring that the secret hand guiding global politics would remain as powerful as ever, though its influence would remain, as always, largely unseen. Final Dialogue George P. Bush and Chelsea Clinton meet at a private event in Washington, D.C. The world doesn't even realize what's coming, George P. says, sipping his drink. They never do, Chelsea replies with a knowing smile but that's how we've always played the game. And with that, the next generation took its place at the table, ready to continue the legacy of secret societies, global influence, and the power that had shaped America and the world for generations. End of book.